guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I'm still in kind of a strange filming spot right now. I am working on a studio space for myself. It's just taking me a little longer than I thought. We were trying to get it just right, but for now, I'm here in my living room. Today, I'm in a really good mood because I get to give you guys some good news. Imagine that in 2020. And the good news is, thanks to you guys supporting the Thorn campaigns over the years, we have now raised over 100 thousand dollars through this channel for Thorn. This is just a really surreal and full circle moment for me. I remember coming up with this idea on my couch in my old apartment about raising money for Thorn through merch. And over the years, so many of you have submitted designs to go on t-shirts for Thorn merch. And then I started working with small businesses such as Candles by Victoria and Art by Jack. And then of course, one of my favorites, Magic of Eye, which we will be doing that again next month. Get ready. But I just wanted to say thank you to everyone one who has bought a shirt, bought a sweatshirt, bought any of these collabs. Without you, I would not have been able to make this goal happen. It's honestly just wild. And everyone at Thorn is so thankful for all of your support. You guys love the one that we did in September with Art by Jack Studio. So we're doing it again because it sold out incredibly quick last time. So if you want something, be quick. Last time the pendants were very popular. These sold out first. So if you want one, again, be really quick. And then we have these adorable little midi rings. These were also very popular. I've been wearing mine almost every day since I got it. So those will be returning along with the sterling silver rose stamped ring, which is really pretty. And we also made that design into a necklace, which is what I'm wearing today. It's so cute. I love how simple it is. I tend to wear pretty simple necklaces. So I like this one. Then we have these little rose studs, which ended up being so cute. I'm so glad she added some earrings. And then she's also gonna have some rose crystal carvings available for you guys as well in this collection, which is so cool. And the best part, she is offering a very generous 25% of all purchases will be donated to Thorn. The last campaign raised over $5,000 and this time she has even more stock. So it's awesome. I know it's going to do really well again, especially right before the holidays. So check it out. The link will be below as well as the link to Candles by Victoria. That is still going as well. And then we also do have some Thorn merch that is always available on our website, which is milehighermerch.com. Again, thanks guys. I'm just blown away. This is a huge accomplishment. I feel really proud of this community community and all of you that care so much about this content beyond it just being entertaining. You care about these people and I'm just so thankful to have all of you supporting what I'm trying to do. If you want to learn more about Thorn, I will link some resources below. I can't talk about it too much on YouTube these days because they're AI system just automatically flags it. But anyway, I'm so excited about this and I have even more fundraising plans for the future. So look out for that. Okay, so switching gears into this video, into this case, this is a very sad case. Today we're gonna to be talking about a missing girl. Her name is Tiara Williams. And this case takes place in Greensboro, North Carolina. Tiara was born on June 18th, 1996, and she has another brother named Cannon. For the first seven or so years of her life, her parents were together, but eventually when she was around that age, they split up. Tiara was very close with her family, very close with her mom and her brother and also her grandmother. I'm not clear on her relationship with her dad. I don't have much information about that. But after her dad left, she was very helpful to her mom with her brother. She was kind of like a second mother to him in a lot of ways. And she was known as a very nurturing person in general. She was just really friendly and caring to everyone she came across, so she was happy to be this figure in her family. In high school, she thrived. She was doing very well. She was very happy. She was dating a little bit. She had a couple on and off boyfriends, but her mom was very protective of her, and she closely monitored everything she did, including her social media. And for her mom, this was really because she loved Tiara so much. She was just worried about her, wanted to make sure she was successful. She wanted a good future for her but she kind of went a little too far with that. And eventually Tiara just decided she really needed some independence. The two of them started to kind of butt heads a little bit. They were arguing, not anything bad, but eventually Tiara did decide to move out and it wasn't a terrible situation where she was angry and you know moving out because she hated her mom. She just decided to live with her grandma instead in her apartment. And this was, yeah, because she wanted some independence from her mom, of course, and that is kind of nice. Um, but also because she loved her grandma, 
want her grandma lived alone. She felt like it would be better if they kind of split out. So, you know, her brother lived with her mom and she would live with her grandma. That way everyone has someone to live with. And then her grandma also said it was because she loved her cooking a lot better than her mom. So it wasn't anything bad. She still saw her mom all the time, but at the time that she went missing, she was living with her grandma. At the end of that year in 2014, she ended up graduating from high school. Dudley High School was where she went. And only a few months later, she started college and she was very excited about college. She was planning to major in early childhood development at Guilford Technical College. She had wanted to work with children from a really young age. She loved children and when she was a junior in high school she did some type of program where she worked with kids and that kind of sparked her love for you know working in children in general but she also wanted to work with children with disabilities specifically and this was a true passion of her so of course she was excited to start college and get the ball rolling. So instead of starting school in the fall she decided to wait until the winter after the holidays had passed and everything and she was going to be starting in January. So it was January 7th, 2016. Around 7.30 that morning, Tiara was getting ready to go over to her school and register, enroll in all her classes, get her ID, do all of that. And even though that day can be a little depressing in my memory, cause it's like school's starting back up, it is still a little exciting to get all your stuff and feel like you have this fresh start. So she was motivated and she was ready to start college. Later that evening, she went to her mom's house around 6 p.m. and she just went over there to kind of hang out, talk about how her day went, fill her mom in on how college was gonna be looking for her and everything. And according to her mom, Tiara was completely fine that day. She said that she was excited to start school, looking forward to the future. And her mom even said that the two of them could go shopping that week for textbooks and other school supplies. And Tiara was excited about that. So everything was fine. They continued to hang out for a bit. They ended up taking down her mom's Christmas tree, January 7th, you know, time to go. I normally give it another week after that, to be honest. Her brother was also at the house at the time and then eventually her boyfriend Aaron came to the house as well And then the three of them left her mom's place and went back to her grandma's place because she had dinner waiting for them So this is Tiara Aaron and her brother her grandma Vanessa was making beef stew and this was one of her favorites So she was excited to go over there for dinner So she said goodbye to her mom and that would be the last time she would see her So after the three of them had dinner they went and were just chilling out on the couch she was scrolling her phone. She was really into her phone, according to her family. It sounds pretty typical for, you know, a teenage or young adult girl. But the boys were just watching TV. She was just scrolling and they were just relaxing. But suddenly at 8.30 p.m., she gets up and says, hey guys, I'm gonna go meet with my friend named Travis. And this was weird because neither of them, Cannon and Aaron, knew of anyone named Travis in her life. And Aaron didn't say anything. He didn't question her, even though he didn't know of anyone named Travis, he just let her go. And that's kind of strange, I have to say. Um, I feel like Josh would question me a little more if I just said I was going off to see some guy named Travis, but you know, they're young, she had probably a lot of friends. I could see how he would just wanna you know, be chill and let her go, not question her too much. She said she'd only be gone for an hour and they thought that she'd only be gone for an hour. So they just decided to chill there for a little bit longer. Eventually they went over to Aaron's apartment to play video games over there while they waited because she was taking a while. But then 9.30 came along and there was still no sign of Tiara. So Aaron decided to go back to her grandma's house and wait for her there because he was getting worried. But then 10.30 came, 11.30 came, there was still no sign of her. He called calls her, he texts her several times, and there was no response. The next morning rolls around, 7 a.m. There's still no sign of her. And as soon as her grandma woke up and heard what was going on, that there was no sign of her, she started to freak out, rightfully so. So she called Tiara's mom, and she started to freak out as well. They kept calling her phone, but it just kept going straight to voicemail, which was a really bad sign because she always had her phone. If she could answer that phone, she would. And that made them think that something really bad had happened when she left the house. And they were trying to figure out who this Travis person was that she said she was gonna go meet. Tiara's mom said that at first she tried to think, you know, maybe it's possible that she's just hanging out with her friends. She's just being an irresponsible teenager and not answering her phone. But she knew that that was so unlike her daughter. And not only that, she had left her purse 
with her brand new ID there. It just didn't make any sense. Also, she left her phone charger behind. And this is something she always took with her because she always wanted to make sure her phone was charged. I know a lot of people that do that. So if she's gonna be gone for several days or she's like going away with friends somewhere, she's gonna bring her phone charger. So around 12.30 that day, Tiara's mom, Danielle, goes and meets with Aaron. And she kind of questions him about, you know, why didn't you say anything when Tiara said she was gonna go meet some guy named Travis? Didn't you think it was odd that you didn't know who this person was? You didn't have any further questions? I mean, it is a little weird. And basically he said he just didn't really wanna be up in her business, didn't think too much of it. And of course he feels bad now. So at this point they feel like the best option is to get into her Facebook account, see if she has anyone named Travis on her account and then they can start there. So Danielle actually does know the password luckily, so they are able to get in. And when they log in, she has no Facebook contacts under Travis. But one thing that they did find on her Facebook were a few messages with an ex-boyfriend. And so her mom thought maybe it's possible that Travis was just a cover name for the ex-boyfriend, which obviously she wouldn't tell Aaron if she was gonna go see her ex. And by this point, they start to panic a lot. And this is when Danielle decides to go ahead and make a police report. So police went to the last place that she was seen, which was her grandmother's apartment, and they looked around and didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Police, you know, asked if there was anything going on in her life that maybe she would wanna run away from? Is she fighting with family? Is she in any type of trouble? Trying to see if there's something else there, but there was nothing. Everything was fine in her family. Everything was fine in her life. In fact, like I said, she was excited to start school. She was excited to get her life going and eventually work with kids with disabilities. She felt like she was following her passion. She was happy with her family and her boyfriend. None of it made sense. So the next day rolls around and her family and friends spend the whole day you know, putting up flyers anywhere that they can, telling as many people as they can to be on the lookout for Tiara. And they even talked to a couple people in the Stony Brook apartment complex where her grandma lived and no one had seen Tiara that day. And it wasn't until three days later on January 11th that the police moved this to their crimes against persons department. But the police really don't have much to work with other than the name Travis, which Danielle is telling them that there's a good possibility this is like a cover for her ex-boyfriend. Now we really don't know that much about the ex-boyfriend. His name has not been released. There's not that much info out there about him, but according to their family, he was always the one reaching out to her. He was the one that was more into the relationship with her. She was kind of always like trying to get rid of him a little bit and he just kept coming back. I mean, we all know a guy like that, but she was one of those people that would stay in relationships that were bad because she felt guilty for the other person. It was kind of one of those situations. Her mom thought maybe he was a little obsessed with her. Maybe it's possible that because they were already chatting that he had kind of roped her back in. Police started to look into this guy a little bit and they were able to determine that TR's cell phone had last pinged in the area of the apartments where she was last seen. However, there were no new texts or calls made from that phone and it was believed that her cell phone last pinged in that area before the battery died and it was no longer traceable. The police were able to get in contact with her ex-boyfriend and bring him in for questioning and when they brought him in, he said that they hadn't even been talking lately, which made him look even more sketchy because they know that they had. The police told him that they know that this is a lie. They saw the Facebook messages. We know that you guys were talking. And after that, he completely changed his story. He gave in. He said, not only was I talking to her, I actually saw her the night she went missing. He said that the two of them were texting and that she left the house to go meet up with him. He said that they met up around 8.30 like she said she was going to and they talked for about a half hour. And then at around nine, she got out of his car that they were talking in and started walking back towards the apartment complex that her grandma lived in and that was the last time that he saw her. He also gave police access to his phone, which proved that he was texting her up until 8.30 that night, and then it stopped. So of course they decided to have a look at his car, see if they could find any fingerprints or any clues, any evidence, any hair left behind by Tiara, any blood, but there was no signs of anything. So that kind of left them at a dead end, because this was a little sketchy, but he really didn't seem like he had done anything. And unfortunately there were no security cameras in their apartment complex to capture her walking and confirm that she walked back to the apartment. So police started looking into her life further, into her past, and they found that at one point she was dating this guy named Trey. So they were able to get in contact with Trey and he was cooperative with the police. And he said he had no contact with her in a while and there was no evidence of any contact. Also, her mother believes that it was definitely not this guy. She said that he's a good 
good guy and that he would have never harmed her. So there were really no good leads to work with. And after a week had gone by, they decided to really go to the media and see if they could rally the help of the community. And luckily the media decided to work with them and were really great about pushing the story. They covered it all the time, all the updates. They were also able to set up a Facebook group and they've had a lot of community help on there as well. And they also have their own hotline, which is run by Tiara's grandfather, Daryl. And within 10 days of the hotline being open, they got one call that they thought was going to help them out. It was a sanitation worker calling from the town about 17 miles away from Greensboro. And the man said that he saw a woman who looked like Tiara in this area. And then another call actually came in from a woman saying that she saw someone who looked like Tiara walking along Textile Drive in Greensboro. And their family believes that these two sightings could possibly be related. I'm sorry about the lighting in here. Hopefully I get it right next week, guys. But Daryl actually thinks that they're could be someone holding Tiara hostage. They still believe this to this day, but at the time they thought that maybe this person was taking her out and maybe they are someone who is in the North Carolina area. She could be under someone's control and just be under drugs and being forced to do things and be kind of just taken around kind of as a shell of herself. So this definitely left Daryl feeling a little more hopeful. Then eventually police got a call that was pretty scary. It was an anonymous tip saying that her body could be located in a tractor trailer lot. And this lot was across the street from the apartment complex that her grandma lived in. So police, of course, went and searched the area. They brought cadaver dogs and they found nothing. On February 8th, the police did another extensive search in the area. They searched as many streams and little bodies of water as they could, but everything was frozen over because it was a freezing time of year. This made a lot of areas just unsearchable for the time being. They would literally have to wait till the water thawed out to hopefully find her body. I mean, how depressing is that to tell the family? So then on February 20th, that same year, that guy Trey was found dead. He was found shot to death in his apartment. And at first they thought maybe these are connected, but it turns out that this was just a roommate dispute and an argument that sadly ended with Trey losing his life. So no leads came from that either. So then April comes along and Danielle ends up getting a message sent to their Facebook page. The message was from a waiter who worked at a waffle house in Jessup, Georgia, which is 400 miles away from where they lived. And this person was confident that this was Tiara and that this person came into the restaurant several times per week. She said that she was always with a group of other people, but she kind of looked like she wasn't really part of this group or wasn't enjoying herself and she was always there. So they start to think that maybe she's stuck with the wrong crowd. She's with a group of people that are drugging her, keeping her there. She doesn't quite know where she is and she needs help. So Daryl goes there and he ends up staking out the place for days, sitting in his car, just watching, hoping that she'll show up. And after this, strangely enough, this person never came back. But this person who had contacted them was persistent that this girl really did exist and that she came in all the time. It was very strange that she wasn't showing up. So Daryl believed her and he went ahead and checked out all of the nearby hotels and motels near the Waffle House to see if maybe this group of girls was staying there. He brought flyers that had Tiara's face on them so that he could show the staff at the different locations. And one of these managers actually did recognize Tiara. He said that there was a man that always stayed at his hotel that was clearly a pimp. He always had a bunch of girls around him and that he was pretty sure TR was one of them. So of course he calls the police because this is illegal and the guy at the hotel tells them about the man and they end up busting this guy and they found him with a bunch of girls like the manager had said, but none of them were Tiara. And this guy said he had never seen Tiara before. And they believe that one of the girls was confused as Tiara. They were very similar looking and it's quite possible that she was the one that was at the Waffle House and the girl was just confused. So it ended up being a huge letdown, but they did not give up and tips continued to come in from all over. And many of these tips were people saying they think that they saw her somewhere or or that they saw an ad online that looked like her. And at this point, police are really starting to think that she was abducted and sold into human trafficking. So her grandpa, Daryl, made it his mission to find her if she was in this world. He drove all over the country, visiting clubs, strip clubs, and other underground places where sex trafficking often takes place. And he even offered up his own cash reward of $2,000. But after months of this, after months of trying to find her, there was nothing to work with still. By May of 2016, the water was starting to thaw 
saw so they could look for her body in some of those streams and they did carry out some searches. Unfortunately, they did not find anything and their family became pretty desperate at that point. Eventually they decided to take a second look at Aaron, her boyfriend, you know, it was kind of odd how he just let her go that night. And Tiara had said several times that her and Aaron weren't on the same page all the time, that sometimes they would argue. Sometimes their relationship was just kind of rocky and they didn't want the same things. Apparently, Tiara was already starting to say to people that she wanted to end the relationship with him. She just didn't know how. Like she didn't see it going anywhere, but he was such a nice guy. She just didn't know how to end it. Aaron said that he was shocked that they were pointing fingers at him. And at first he felt kind of betrayed about that, but he understood that if he was in her position, he would want to do everything he could to find his child. So he understood that he was one of the last people that saw her. But Aaron said that he had absolutely nothing to do with her disappearance, that he was incredibly distraught when he first found out that she was missing. He said that this was one of the lowest points in his whole life, that he was experiencing true depression over missing her. And at some points he was so angry and upset about the situation, that he considered taking his own life. He said that of course he does have regret about not asking Tiara more about this Travis guy, not following up. He was just trying to be the chill boyfriend and quickly they were able to rule him out as a suspect, which leaves the family with pretty much nothing. However, on June 13th, they did get a tip from a family member that thought that they saw her at a DMV in Greensboro. Apparently this family member saw her in the parking lot and when she called out to her, trying to make contact with her, this person said that she didn't know who Tiara was, but that she would pray for her. And she just felt like this was really odd. So they reported it to the police and they ended up pulling the security camera footage from the DMV. And they were able to determine that there was a girl that looked like Tiara there that day, but it was not Tiara. So this was just another letdown for their family. Within the next year, tips started slowing down and their family started to feel worried that people were forgetting about Tiara or that maybe they would never find her. Danielle is still very suspicious about her ex-boyfriend, the one that she had seen that night. I feel like that's the most suspicious person too, but that's only because there's nothing else to work with. The police have no evidence that it was him, absolutely nothing. So it leaves them kind of stuck. Investigators still believe that someone in the apartment complex knows something, that someone saw something or that someone could have abducted her from right in the complex, the Stony Brook apartment complex. So if you have any information about this case, please call the Greensboro Crime Stoppers Unit at 336-373-1000. That's 336-373-1000. And I will also link their Facebook page below. I just feel so bad for this family. Having no answers like this is so hard. That's just so incredibly frustrating. I truly can't imagine how they are feeling every day or what it's been like for them since she went missing. Tiara really seems like a wonderful person. She's beautiful. She had a really bright future ahead of her. She should be with her family. I feel like the police are really on the right track with the human trafficking thing. It sadly sounds like one of those cases to me. But if that's true, that means she could still be out there. She could be being held captive somewhere or with some sketchy group like that, you know, the group that was hanging out at the Waffle House, you know, just because she wasn't actually in that group doesn't mean she's not in a similar situation. So please be on the lookout for Tiara. Share her photo anywhere you can or share this video, share her story. That's all really, really helpful. And please go check out their Facebook page. I know their family will appreciate the extra support and the following. That's what really keeps these families going because these searches can be so, so exhausting, especially when you have so little to work with. But that is it for me today, guys. Be sure to check out the latest Thorn Jewelry collab. All the information for that is linked below as well. Also, just wanted to remind you guys, I do have a link in the description box for case requests. Be sure to check that out before you leave. Also, make sure to subscribe. Hit the like as well on your way out. Maybe that notification bell. And I will see you guys next week.